Hi there, I'm making this video because my friendly Anne wanted to know how to make backroom bolts. So if you too want to learn how to turn these trees into these bolts, stay tuned. So let's start with requirements. You're going to need 85 wood cutting, 93 fletching, and some back rim and bolt tips. You can buy these from Mammy Rimba, who you can see in the background here, just north of Edgeville Monastery, near the Wilderness Wall. One important thing to note about making back riminal bolts is you have to make them at the tree. If you walk more than three spaces from the tree with logs or unfinished shafts in your um, inventory, they will turn to sawdust. The best way to think about making back bolts is not so much like fletching, it's more like doing a farm run. You visit in various patches around the map, collecting produce, then moving on to the next one. So now for recommended items. I'm not going to go through the whole list, I'll just point out the important bits. Obviously you're going to need a hatchet, augmented crystal hatchet being the best in game. I've got one perked with honed 6 and refined 4. They're easily the best perks for making back criminal bolts. I also carry Sana's fire torch with me. This is an offhand woodcutting tool. It gives you a chance of doubling logs, so really, really handy. But it does cost about 170 mil at the minute. Therefore, this should go without being said, but do not take anything in the wilderness you are not willing to lose. That being said, there's not a lot of PKers around these days and as long as you don't get scolded, if you do get PK'd, you won't lose any valuable items as long as you're not scolded. So you'll, you'll lose like your potions and your unused tips and any bolts you've finished, but your hatchet, your fire torch, all that sort of stuff is safe. Also on this list I have things like wood sentinel outfit, just good for wood cutting, ring of whispers, an invisible boost, lumberjack or I use the top tier just for that boost with cutting woods. Then it's consumables, so a beaver, dirt cheap, why not use one. Super wood cutting potions are about 5k each, but they boost your wood level plus five so they really help the one that people aren't sure about is the blood weed incense sticks they're 50 60k each you're probably going to use eight or nine of them quite pricey but they do increase yield and i think they pay for themselves long term also fletching cape there's a chance of free ammo and the tyrion quiver the reason i carry that is if you store your ammo in it while you're in the wilderness you get pk'd you lose the quiver it's free to get back the ammo's destroyed so the pka gets nothing so you know if if you can't get it why should they before getting started just a little safety tip go into settings combat settings and then choose options now make sure the attack player option is hidden this way you can't accidentally attack another player get yourself scold then panic because you've got your Sarma's fire torch and your crystal hatchet on you just a safety tip so time to get going obviously you can do these trees in any order you wish i'll just show you the order i do I like to start at the Chaos Temple, level 12 Wildy. In the background you can see the level 18 Wildy Obelisk, which is what I use to get here. You can use it to get to other trees in the wilderness as well, but I've got faster methods which I'll show you. Right, so get your beaver out, get your ore on, light six incense sticks for an overload and then two more to extend the timer to about half an hour, swig some wood cutting potion and then get some wood. Wood cutting's pretty boring, so is fletching, so we're gonna start skipping ahead. The faster method I use to get to the second tree is a Dragonkin teleport tablet. Once at ED2, run back out into the wilderness, then northwest up to the second tree. And from here on out, it's basically rinse and repeat. Drink some potion, chop some wood. In the background there, you can see the level 50 Wilderness Obelisk. That's another way to get to this tree. It's quite quick, but because I've got the dunk so I just use a teleport. After finishing with this tree, run back to ED2, where you can bank if you need to before you teleport onto the next tree. 
To get to the next tree, I use the Wilderness Sword and teleport to the Agility Course, then run east to the Pirate's Hideout. I aim for the north side of this tree, because someone once said to me, the north is level 50, the south is level 49. It's deep wilderness, more logs. Utter nonsense, but once you've been told that, you will stand on the north side. In the background here, you should be able to see the level 44 wilderness obelisk, but it's quite a long way away. That's why I use the sword. So that now is the final wildy tree done and we can escape to safety. So run northeast up to the mage training arena bank thing. You know, where you slash the cobwebs, pull the lever, go underground. Once in here, again, I use the wilderness sword to teleport to Edgeville. Once in Edgeville, run south and go into the Souls War lobby area. In here, you can bank and grab those items you didn't want to risk in the wildy. The requirement for this tree is Nomad's Requiem. Now, from this point on, I will vary my route slightly. Two of the trees do not have banks and three of them do. So if you need supplies, go to a tree with a bank. If you've got lots of supplies, go to a more remote one. To get to the next tree, I use my Grace the Elves, which are tuned to Zanaris Fairy Rings, then Fairy Ring DKQ to the Glacial Cave. From there, I run north to the cave exit entrance Go outside and head west to the next tree. This is one of the trees that does not have a bank and it requires the ritual of the Majora in order to chop. And again, drink potion, get wood, make bolts and be ready to teleport to the next tree. To get to this tree, I use Dragon's Medallia and teleport to Darkmare. Leave the Arbor Eaton door and run just south round the corner of the tree. Pay attention to where I stand because the spot I use is the one place the vias are least likely to get you. The requirement for this tree is branches of dark mare and even though I'm in a safe spot I still carry sun spear just in case the vaya comes. Better to have and not need than need and not have. The next teleport I'll use is the attuned Elven teleport to Melia, the Melia district. Once there, run north, enter the resource dungeon, and then north again in the trees just on the far side of the wall. For this, you will require Plague's End and 95 Dungeoneering. And again, same old story. Drink a potion, get some wood, make some bolts, and get ready to teleport. The final teleport I use is the Mana Farm teleport to get to Mana Farm, then run south. You will need 225k woodcutting reputation to plant this tree. And here we go, final tree. You know what you do now. Drink potion, get some wood. And then as a little bonus, I thought I'd show myself actually fletching as it's a fletching video. So this is the point where I should be telling you how much money I make and how much it costs me to do. I'm not into that because let's face it, in three months time the prices will completely change. So what I will tell you is I generally use one beaver pouch, about five four dose super wood cutting potions and about eight or nine of the incense sticks. I get on average between 3k and 4k um, bolts and the worst day has been less than a thousand. That was awful. Best day is like 9,600. But it doesn't always go that way. Oh, idiot, idiot, idiot. That's what I mean. This is what I mean. This is what not thingy does. I just lost all of them. I run away to bank the sword before I put the tips on. Oh, it shows you where you don't walk away from the tree.